six, nine, Hello there YouTube, today we have another video, this time it's a scalable Rook 2020 that we built inside of the house and looking at it, it came out pretty good. We have spent like two weeks on this system to build it as it looks now, but someone who is building their second printer or more than one will be able to do it like I think around one or two days you can build a Rook 2020 scalable or any other Rooks. So looking at the system we do see that it's a Core XY and the Core XY system has three Z motors, two motors for the X and the Y, that's about it for motors, so five motors in total and the extruder so alongside with this Rook that we have assembled we have also change the the hot end the dragon burner is being modified to be able to fit in this gnome on there and it works fine it's a nice add-on it makes the printer look a bit fancier i do like the implementation of the small screen on the printer the nicest part of it is whilst it's printing it shows how far along you are on the print percentage of the print comes on there and when you're homing and everything will come on there so you can also see we have the serial number 140 i named the printer the impresa and this is a, a magnet that i made and we engraved the lettering and everything in there so i like overall this printer but i must warn you if you want to make one of these it's a lot of work for the first timers so I think the next time I make a printer it will be much easier because I know what to do and what not to do. It has also a Z-Tilt, three motors, so two in front, one in the back. The Z-Tilt works fine and it will always, before it starts printing, it will do the Z-Tilt to make the, the bed as flat as possible. And then it will do with the camp system that we also implemented in there. It will bed level the place that it's going to print at. This printer has cost me around 900 euros, which is pretty expensive because for that price, you can also buy a, a K1 Max from Creality. And you can also buy a P1P and have some spare. So maybe the spare you can use to get an AMS system. But yes, a building yourself printer, a self-made printer feels a bit different. It feels like you have made this. So it has a special place. So for this system, we are using an MKS Monster 8 V2 32-bit MCU. And for the motors, we're using Cloudray Motor NEMA 17 motors, five of them, as I said. And for the hot end, it's TCHC TD6S. And for the extruder, we're using Orbiter V2. So we also have added a Konomi inside there on the Dragon Burner. That is something that Said from our Discord channel has made for us to make it fit on there. And also Sia Touch is also being implemented inside of this Dragon Burner hot end. So if you guys want these SDLs, you can find them in the description below. And as drivers, of course, we're using TMC2209 drivers for the MKS Monster 8. But it's... Uh, pretty silent system because this is an open printer compare this to bamboo or the k1 max and we're also using a creality k1 max print bed 220 
volts instead of 24 volts good thing about that is it heats up really fast bad thing is you need a ssr a solid state relay in between system otherwise you won't be able to connect it and get the source that it needs which is 20 to 20 volts to the bed itself so all these parts as you guys might know are printed so the trunks as i told these are only for aesthetics on the sides the ones that we actually used are for the z motors in the front and in the back and also the X and the Y motors needed the trunks to lead the cables through so that the system looks pretty neat. So you don't see any cables except for the hot end cable and the PTFE tubing. For the rest, there are no cables hanging around the sides or whatever. Crucial on this system also is a Raspberry Pi. We are using Raspberry Pi 4B. It runs through that the clipper and clipper screen is going to be implemented as soon as possible as well. We didn't have time to put that in the video now, but it will be in the future, right in the middle. So let's home the printer so that you can see. So while it's homing, first the X axis will go to the right and then the Y axis will go to the back. And then it will home the Z axis and we are using a CR touch and we're also using for the bed assembly the K1 Max's bed which works fine so the CR touch is doing its its thing again so now it's homed and when we do Z tilt this will happen so first the left motor then the back motor then the right motor the Z motors and then it just tries to make the bed as flat as possible it can try up to 10 times this is the second time now it's doing the third time well when it's flat enough the, the correction is good enough it will stop doing the z tilt now it has done it and has done it three times it says and the tolerance is 0 0.01 to 500 so really good tolerance that is pretty flat so when you do a first layer i will show the first layer on the, on the screen now so you can see what kind of a first layer this machine can output this video is sponsored by pcbway.com the world's go-to supplier for premium custom circuit boards tell us what you need then let us design and manufacture your pcbs to the highest level Low print runs and 24-hour turnarounds with assembly starting from just $5. Get an instant quote and join our online community at PCBWay.com. Which is pretty good it still has to be dialed in the flow rate is now at 1.5 for doing that first layer so we have to do pressure advance it hasn't been done yet and the machine also has to do input shaping which also needs to be done but we are waiting for parts so that we can also assemble it in front of the dragon burner but overall this machine as you guys can see is a clean build and the clean build is what we were aiming for you can see on the back that the cabling here is also like as clean as possible i know there will be people who can make it even cleaner but what we have also done with the z motors in the front to the back is here you can see that the z motors have the cable it goes into these trunks these trunks lead it to the back and from the back it goes here and from there 
it goes to the back of the printer for the to the AM, MCU. So also the the Y axis here that motor has a cable that goes from there to the trunk on the side goes down and then you see the cable peeping from here goes also in the same trunk to the back same things with the right the x-axis and also the motors from the back here and the front z1 so the z1 and the z2 cables are being leaded by the trunks I will put the trunks also in the link in the description below because they are not on the scalable uh, Rook download page so you will have to download those separately from uh, Thingiverse. This backplate that we have done Said from my Discord channel has helped me a lot to make this printer so yes thumbs up for him so if you want to speak to the person he's on my Discord a very helpful person he has helped me through all these small tiny problems that may occur and also through the clipper that we were having trouble but I'll give you an example of the problems that we had is the Z motors the Z motor in the back here is running at 0.65 amps the front two are running at 0.45 amps so why does the back motor need more amps well that's maybe because there is one motor but there are people who are running 0.45 amps on three motors together and no problem at all but mine was skipping belt skipping and everything even though we had tightened the belt as much as possible still there were some belt skips so we had to give it some more amps and now the problem is fixed also the extruder when you print the extruder would skip on a normal print like uh, the values that we are giving in for the flow it would be skipping and not printing so we had to dial that in to 0.7 amps instead of 0.5 it was on before the fix so we have given it like this the max amp that you can give it under normal circumstances because you can go up to 1.2 amps that is uh, the peak so we you cannot use extruder motor on the peaks because it will uh, prematurely die so but 0.7 is still on the safe range and that is what works for us so if your motor is skipping even though your belts are very tight then you might need to give it a little bit more amps but stay in the margin of healthy motor amps because max rates are not always a safe range you guys probably have already seen these yellow bars here this is for the to stiffen the frame because the extrusion frame is only put together by these cubes on the sides but they are not rigid enough to when you're printing on high speeds to keep the printer stable enough so that's why we have put on eight of these bars on all the corners as you guys can see here and on the back there are four as well i think it looks a bit chunkier but also at the same time it looks to, to have these accents in yellow or gold more likely so we want to thank also everyone who has participated in this build to make this happen as i mentioned before said and Rollerhorn and can rock who made this rook scalable 2020 available for the public so this is what the back side of the printer looks like we have a meanwhile well power supply and we have a ssr solid states relay underneath it that's for the bed we need that if your print bed is 220 instead of 24 volts you need this good about this is your bed will heat up faster because it's getting the mains to 20 volts to the bed so that's why it will work faster to heat up your bed very convenient but the issue is you need a SSR to put in between your setup so how it goes is from the mains you go to your SSR here you couple it from here uh, 220 volts from your power supply you go to your SSR from the SSR 2 volts because this will be 24 volts goes to your MCU so you have that because otherwise that won't work and we have also designed well cover here to put on two 24 volts fans and that's how the motors are being connected underneath this is the drivers and everything is on there and you might think this is an uh, overkill but it's not because as you can see there is no cooling solution for the for the Raspberry Pi you can if you hold your hand here you can he feel that there is enough airflow to also cool down Raspberry Pi which is working around 35 to 39 degrees Celsius at all times and that is also fixing the issue because with one fan there was not enough flow that going there but like this you don't need any 
cooling solution for your Raspberry Pi. Other than that, that's what the backside looks like. Apart from also we have a Titan bolt here that tightens the cable. So the cable is kind of fixed here. It is right enough to go to the front. You have a little bit of play. The motors, let me talk about the motors a little bit more. These, are, these have some tightness so you can turn these screws and it will tighten the belts a little bit more but it has a limitation of uh, a couple millimeters so don't think you can go all the way back or something it doesn't first you have to tighten your x and y axis and then you know make it as tight as possible and then you can add these parts here to, to tighten or belt tighteners here this is what the konomi looks like when it's heating up the bed so we gave the command to print uh, benchy so you can see on the display that the actual bed temperature to go to the temperature that is desired which is 60 at the moment once it's reached that it will do the same for the hot end as you guys can see now desired temperature is 210 and once it's reached that temperature it will start z tilting and then bed leveling and then it will start to print it So as you guys can see this benchy came up pretty good except for some stringing on here you can see some stringing but that's uh, a slicer problem uh, but it's the surface is really smooth and the bottom came up really nice as well so yeah this is a successful print in my opinion even the details on the back is perfect yeah this is what the rook can put out as a quality and the print time was 40 minutes so yes we can make it faster but at the moment this is what we have tried out so thank you guys for watching this first impressions and review of this scalable rook 2020 stay tuned for comparing this rook 2020 against the creole dk1 max and also bamboo x1 carbon that which is my favorite printer so far that is you know out of the box that still is the crown jewel in my opinion uh, well kind of also because of the ams system that is working pretty well now after the updates but also creality k1 max is also one of my favorite printers so that you know what is waiting for you guys to enjoy thank you guys for watching this video hit the thumbs up if you liked the video hit the thumbs down if you didn't like the video subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more content like this in the future bye